had a group of students come and visit me with their faculty member in charge of them. And he was very obstreperous. He argued. He really wanted to argue. So I got the general drift of his argument. See, what sort of opinions were likable to him. And then said something that would entirely accord with that sort of opinion system. And he denied it. So I said, sir, you are playing a game. You are bound and determined to disagree with anything I say. And he was nonplussed. So, you see, we are under this tremendous social pressure because talking with each other is our principal means of communication. And so more and more it hypnotizes us. When you hypnotize a person, you do it chiefly by talking. Relax while I count up to five, you know, be very relaxed, etc. All that jazz. And... Uh, so it is the word which spellbinds us. Look at that word, the spellbind. The victim of spelling. <laughs> and so all these conventions of language in which we think, even if we're quite illiterate, uh, illiterate people think in words just as much as literate people. Uh, in other words, an ordinary <coughs> ignoramus is, is just as much, if not more, under the spell of words than an intellectual. Children, as soon as they're taught language, become absolutely clobbered by it and resent tremendously being called something. So if I say Johnny's a sissy, he called me a sissy. And children are absolute victims of the calendar. They want to know when it's going to happen. How soon is Christmas? How soon is my birthday? And they want time to go in jerks from one festival to another. Because they are so poisoned by adult conceptions. They have no antibodies against them. So likewise, the, uh, the Japanese have no antibodies against Western culture. And they are complete victims of it. They succumb to smog and even think it's a good thing to have smog. <laughs> have songs about it. How the beautiful fog over the furnace buildings of the factories. Yeah. Haiku. No, this is true. I'm not kidding. In, in a nation of people that's supposed to be great lovers of nature. Japan is, is in, unbelievable. Go to a beach in Japan, you would think they would appreciate wonderful stretches of sand and rocks and the sound of the waves. The tide line of a Japanese beach almost anywhere around the island is a complete mess of plastic cast-offs. Sun lotion bottles, condoms, uh, discarded sandals, uh, anything you can imagine, just the masses of it. Go to a, a, a natural be beauty place where all the tourists go to look at the famous view and the whole place is scattered with rubbish. Napkins, Kleenex, sandwich bags, cigarette packages, what have you. When you, know, you travel in Japan on the underground in Tokyo, one always, always imagined the Japanese are very polite. And in their own setting and in their own cultural context, they indeed are. But on a subway, everything goes amok. And people are crammed in like sardines. They even have special officials to shove the crowd into... <laughs> into the train. And they cannot cope with this situation that is foreign 